Hi, welcome to Only Five Minutes. Hi, and thank you for inviting me. Now, Eurowind Energy is, as the name suggests, predominantly a wind developer, but you're increasingly hybridizing wind projects with solar. What's driving this trend? Uh, the wish for more full load hours. It's simply to, to utilize our grid connection best and get more bang for our bucks. Uh, of course, as we produce more full load hours, we, we, we save uh, also on, on O&M and so on uh, for, for the grid connection. It's just that in, especially in the European markets and some markets in the Americas, uh, we see a lot of uh, benefits from the, the way this, uh, that sun and wind supplement each other. It is very rare that the wind blows uh, and, and the sun shines at the same time. It's very, very little production we lose by letting them share uh, the same grid connection. Uh, and the production we actually lose will be production that is that doesn't have a lot of value because it will be when the power price is through the floor. Now, I understand that hybridizing wind and solar is actually just the beginning of your wind energy and that you're developing energy centers. Can you explain the concept? Uh, what we're looking at is actually how we can enhance our product uh, and, 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 and make it more valuable uh, so it's not just raw power. And the, the concept is that all energy centers will have solar and, and wind uh, and they will have a, a electrolyzer function. So we will produce uh, uh, hydrogen on site. What we then look at, we can then add uh, biogas. We can maybe use some district heating from the from the heat from the from the electrolyzer. We can add batteries for some of the power. We can add a lot of things. We we could also uh, do uh, for uh, synthetic fuels. It all has to do with what offtake is nearby. The offtake very much dictates how the building blocks are set. The only thing that we know for sure is solar and wind and uh, hydrogen production. If we then have the opportunity, if we are near an airport, we will look into what does it take the, then to produce, to take some of that hydrogen and produce uh, avia synthetic aviation fuel. If we are far away from an airport, but it, it may be close to a regular port, it could be a, a, a fuel for shipping. So the off-taker dictates what will be in the center at the end. But the cornerstones, solar, wind, and electrolyzer. And is Eurowind Energy planning to export this concept to other markets where solar wind hybrids are trending? I'm thinking the US, India, Japan, Europe. No, we are looking to, to, to do this in, in other markets. Um, we will do it in the US, uh, absolutely certain. Uh, but we're also looking very much at Eastern Europe. Uh, we have big projects in both Bulgaria, Romania, Poland. Uh, where we could see uh, huge advantages in this, um, and and and, but we are uh, to start with, we, we will do it in on home turf. To say we have planned five of these energy centers in in Denmark. We have uh, purchased uh, the land or secured the land, uh, and and for some of them we already have uh, the, the 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 all the necessary permits from the authorities and so on. So 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 we are progressing and and we are. We're developing this in, in Denmark to start with, uh, but it's, it's most certainly the plan to, to spread it out. And it's not only a Northern European thing. For sure, this, the part of the hybridization of, of the solar and wind, it has to make sense from the natural resources. You can have places where it doesn't make sense. I'm not sure we will ever do hybridization in the north of Finland. Uh, because solar doesn't work there. On, 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 on the other hand, you have also have places where both sources are plentiful. Uh, for anybody who has been uh, at holiday at Camp, Cap Verde will know that these islands of Western Africa, the wind always blows and it's always sunny. So there's very little uh, sort of where they supplement each other. They will both basically be producing all the time, of course, except for, at night for the solar. So, so, so you have to look at the natural resources. They will probably, at some points, set some constraints. But we are looking at a very wide scope. And solar is increasingly a part of that scope, now representing 53% of your development pipeline. Is this a new trend? It's a little bit new, but it also has something to do with the size of solar plants today. That they have grown very, very quickly from being a big solar plant with 20 or 30 megawatt 
to now it's 200, 300, sometimes 500 or 800 megawatt solar plants. And it's very rare that we have the opportunity to set up, let's say 800 or 600 megawatt uh, uh, onshore wind. So it, uh, it has something to do with the size of solar plants that they have grown enormously. Um, so, so often we will have maybe a factor of one to five between wind and solar and some of the energy centers. And lastly, Joachim, where does energy storage fit in? Is it part of the plans or are the markets still a bit too immature? No, we, we would also like to have batteries, but as you say, there is some, some, some ch uh, challenges with how do you capitalize that storage? Do you, do you, are you actually well enough paid for the auxiliary services to, to, to fund, a, uh, to have a battery uh, connected? So that, that is, of course, part of it. Uh, you could also say that the security of supply uh, is not something that is very easily capitalized in most markets, but I think it will come. Uh, that's a, a drive we've seen since, unfortunately, uh, 24th of, of February uh, 2022, when, when Russia invaded Ukraine, that, that we've simply seen that, that energy, the security of supply has become much higher on the agenda and, and probably also the willingness to pay for it. Joachim, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me and, and it was, I was happy to be along.